right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this talk. My name is Jake Brookman. I'm the founder and CEO of CoinFund. And I spent most of 2023 uh, investing in the intersection of AI and Web3. My talk today will be a little bit about um, how we think about AI and Web3 together and the work that we've done in this space. First, I want to address the, the, the following issue. You know, um, when we mix things in crypto like this, a lot of times people think it's very hypey. Is AI and the Web3 intersection hype? I would offer that it's a new category that is poised to impact blockchains and AI. When I started investing in uh, the blockchain technology around 2015, uh, my first question was, what can blockchain be used for beyond just sovereign cryptocurrency? Um, really, the story of blockchain is about coming to different spaces and categories and um, disrupting them. When we apply blockchains to finance, we get DeFi. When we apply blockchains to digital collectibles, we get the NFT space. So to me, it's a very natural um, phenomenon that blockchain would also be applied to AI. But AI has been around for a long time, and blockchain has been around for more than 10 years. So what is motivating the intersection of AI and Web3 now? Why is now the time that this is happening? And I would argue that the reason this is happening now is because we have had some strong advancements in the AI space, as you've seen with LLMs and generative uh, AI over the last two years. Um, the basic breakthrough there is realizing that large models, when you feed more data and more compute into these AI models, they become more intelligent. And that is a fact that was not obvious at all 10 years ago, even to the most plugged in AI scientists out there. And the other thing that's happening right now is because ChatGPT has become one of the fastest adopted um, AI products out there, people have had a chance to learn that there's now more in stake, at stake than ever in terms of their data. Um, products like ChatGPT are poised to pull in more data than Google and Facebook, um, I would say, combined in the past. There's two ways that AI and Web3 can converge. We can bring AI to Web3, or we can bring Web3 to AI. When we bring AI to Web3, we think of this as bringing AI models into a blockchain context. So for example, we could have LLM assistants that are helping us discern the activities that are happening on chain, and maybe even pulling analytics and insights about what's happening. I put in a little picture of the, the rabbit device because I imagine that in the future, um, we'll probably be asking assistance, AI assistants like this a lot about what's happening in the crypto world. When I think about applying AI to DeFi, I think about um, modeling risk, or having models predict volatility, or having an agent that is going around optimizing your particular investment op uh, opportunities and satisfying your particular uh, risk appetite. And finally, we've seen some really cool applications in security where um, reinforcement learning models are learning to find vulnerabilities in smart contracts perhaps better than humans. But the really interesting way that Web3 and AI, I think, converge to me is when we bring Web3 to AI. Because when we do that, what we're doing is we're bringing Web3 primitives to the pipeline that produces AI. We're opening and democratizing it. These, so this means democratization of resources, like big data, compute, and even capital that is required to fit some of these larger models. It means open Web3 style marketplaces for training data, models themselves, and um, inference. It means working through some serious products and verifiable computation, because this is required in order to create um, kind of a trustworthy on-chain AI, as we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, and also privacy, like where are our LLM assistants running? Are they running on OpenAI servers or locally? And what kind of self-sovereign data primitives enable that? And finally, we've also seen 
um, AI products just put tokens into their uh, sort of user stories as incentives, which is another interesting angle of how to bring Web3 primitives to AI. When I think about this pipeline that generates AI models, and this is an oversimplification, of course, but I think about people who have the talent to create these models and the mathematical and technical know-how and experience. I think about access to data, because this is a key primitive to create intelligence and models. I think about training, which requires really high-end hardware and a lot of compute to reach the levels of intelligence we see in something like GPT-4. By the way, GPT-4 is a model with 1.76 trillion parameters. So it really requires quite a bit of hardware uh, to train and time as well. Think about inference, which is the process of getting the outputs of the models um, so that they could be used in products. And I think about productization, which is what are we actually doing with LLMs, generative AI, you know, and other uh, ML. And one observation that is very obvious and natural to everyone here is that this pipeline is owned by a very small number of large big tech companies. And in fact, if you read some analysis of where um, kind of hardware is today, the GPU rich are people like OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, Inflection, X, and Meta. And access to compute is very, very difficult to come by um, for other players. But being actually open in AI is good. I know there is a lot of nervousness out there about AI being safe. But what we're also seeing is that most of the innovation in AI actually happens in open source. This has been to such an extent that last year Google um, leaked a memo internally that was really pointing to the fact that a lot of technical innovation and optimization in LLM models is happening in the open source world. And Google didn't really have a special advantage there other than, of course, their compute. We also talk about AI safety a lot. And when you listen to big tech CEOs, they say that you know, safety is something that has to be guarded, that has to be worked on internally, and the world needs to be protected from, um, you know, from potentially unsafe models. But what that's saying to me is that these CEOs believe that this incredibly important problem can be solved by a few tens of people working in a private context. 50 people at OpenAI, 100 people at OpenAI. But to me, the real way of making sure that AI is safe is to keep it transparent and to let thousands of engineers work on this problem, maybe even tens of thousands. That's the real way that we get true innovation that makes AI safe. And finally, the more time that you spend with ChatGPT, the more it should become obvious that a single monolithic model cannot really work across all contexts because um, people who are querying ChatGPT from India, for example, have a very different cultural context than the people querying it in New York. And what's becoming more and more obvious is that AI assistants will need to be specialized to the tasks, groups, uh, and purposes that they're serving. And that is a world of millions of assistants, not just one monolithic one. How does AI actually go on chain? What does this mean? What this means is that the outputs of AI models become available to smart contracts. And when you attempt uh, to do this, that means that model outputs have to be um, computed by a node on a decentralized network. And of course, many of these networks are permissionless. There are networks that can be joined by third parties who we don't really know. And the question becomes, well, we can kind of trust OpenAI's API to deliver correct outputs because there's a lot of you know, traditional world checks on whether that output is correct. You know, OpenAI is legally liable. You know, they're, um, they're being held to account uh, in a social way. But in a pseudonymous, decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer network, we don't really have those guarantees. And so in order to actually have an output 
of a model that we can trust, we have to use a technological process of verification to verify it, make sure it is correct, and we are getting what we're paying for, and we're not being attacked. Um, one way that this has been done recently is through zero-knowledge proofs, right? Um, we can use ZK to verify the outputs of models um, in a way that will ensure their correctness. And of course, this also comes with a trade-off. When you take a 1.76 uh, billion parameter model like GPT-4, we just don't have the scale in zero-knowledge computation today to serve that kind of um, output and, and to make it verifiable. It's not possible today. Um, however, the state of the art is probably like a few millions of parameters that we can verify using ZKML today. And the insight that I want to give you about that is that there's actually a ton of little models that are incredibly useful um, and really open up the design space of smart contracts. Like, for example, if you wanted to do facial recognition, um, you can very well uh, fit some f facial recognition model inference into a ZK verification framework. And that means that we could do things like build wallets um, that use your face as a security factor, and that's really cool. Uh, at CoinFund, our basic thesis is we think that Web3 can bring a lot of openness and democratization to the AI pipeline. Um, and here's a little history of some of the things we've done in this space. Um, notably, we published our Web3 and AI intersection thesis in September of 2022. Um, and we've been investing in the intersection since 2021. So WorldCoin was our first investment there. This is a startup that's speaking to disambiguating AIs and humans. Um, and I'll go through um, some of these other investments as well. And more recently, we have a couple of portfolio companies, Polyrap, who has gone into the area of agents, and Upshot, that XYZ has recently launched Allura Network, which is a um, kind of a decentralized network for machine intelligence. We've done a lot of work um, in this area at CoinFund. Our most recent announcement has been around Bagel Network. And we can think of Bagel as a kind of open, autonomous marketplace. You might think of it as a data layer for AGI or autonomous agents. And you can also think of it as a collaborative technology where um, think of it as a kind of a GitHub for machine learning data, which could be data used for trading. It could be used for RAG. Um, Bagel, we led Bagel seed round, and they're hiring. Jensen. Uh, is working on an incredibly difficult problem of decentralized training of AI models. Not just distributed training, but decentralized training, um, which requires verification of training. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why this is doing that. <clears throat> I think that Jensen is probably the only company in the world that I know of that has taken the primitives of you know, AI mathematics and ZK mathematics and has come up with a verifiable training scheme. And of course, they're also, along the way, working on democratizing the compute for training. Why do we want to do this? This creates a really high level of automation long term. And when Jensen thinks about the future, they're thinking about putting compute in a configuration where models can be building models, and we can, make, we can be making exponential progress in this area. Giza, gizatech.xyz, uh, is a company that uses Starkware uh, and Cairo to bring AI model inference on chain so that you could use them in smart contracts. And the way that they do this, they take this format called Onyx, which is used to store neural network weights and basically 
um, transpiles them to Cairo so they could be proven with ZK and Starks uh, on StarkNet. What this does is it enables a very, very practical approach to um, using AI outputs in a fully verified way in the smart contracts. And Giza's been out with their framework Orion now for close to about a year. Um, people at hackathons use this. And very, very excited to see what people will build uh, on this in the future. But the very practical um, sort of set of applications that we're actually seeing in the market right now is using machine learning models to empower DeFi applications. Again, this is things like measuring risk, optimizing your yield across, across different opportunities. And Giza is launching very uh, practical products that people can use to um, augment DeFi in this way. Sindri is a SaaS for highly performant zero knowledge proving. And of course, a lot of this proving is going to uh, is today used for you know, things like ZK rollups, but I think over time it will go to ZKML as well, as we need more and more and more verifiable computation. Sindri is not just about um, not just about proving, but actually helping developers and engineers manage the entire pipeline for their ZK circuits. And they support multiple ZK systems um, and make the development around them really, really easy. And finally, uh, WorldCoin, the first project that we invested into in this intersection, is, uh, among other things, creating best-in-class civil resistance. It's, I think this is an incredibly important primitive in decentralization. And Sam Altman's vision is the disambiguation online of who is an AI um, and who is a human. I also think that WorldCoin has been very, very misunderstood. To me, WorldCoin is one of the most Web3 values compliant privacy technologies and hands down the best implementation uh, using hardware, of course, for proof of humanity. There's still a lot of open issues in the intersection of AI and Web3. Um, notably, compute is hugely bottlenecked by companies like NVIDIA, Microsoft, and so on. And a big open question is, you know, will Web3 open networks be able to source enough comp compute to compete or compete in time. And what's sort of encouraging here is that um, there's a lot of work being done to move training and inference to commodity GPU hardware, um, as well as some examples in the market of decentralized networks already running uh, consumer applications that, uh, that require inference. Other issues might include the scalability of zero-knowledge proofs as a verification mechanism. Um, privacy is a huge issue because even a decentralized network, when you send your job to be inferenced, your, um, your counterparty still might see some of your private data. So how do, we, how do we protect the privacy of people who are querying these networks? There's also a human element here, right? Um, historically, AI folks have been very hesitant to adopt Web3, but that is changing as people like Andre Karpathy and Elon are tweeting about decentralization. And finally, will the product suite in AI Web3 be compelling? Um, and will they make money? That's my talk. If you're building in this intersection of AI and Web3, We'd love to hear from you at CoinFund. We'll talk to anyone um, about their idea in this space. Please follow me and our firm. Thank you very much.